What's going on everybody? Welcome to Core Conversations for a Tuesday. Uh, happy back to school for those of you in uh, wherever you are that's going back to school today. It's Dad Goals and um, yeah, got some things to talk about today. So it's a Freestyle Tuesday and we're going to talk about this tipping point with a few different things. Pastor Charles, how are you, sir? Um, where are you in the world for now? right now and fit for the call Dwayne got our faith community in the space right now I did a talk yesterday I did a greeting on Sunday actually at uh, Praise Cathedral in the area which was super fun so um, I will send it to you guys privately I'm not posting it but I'll be using it just to share some greetings when I'm doing my some campaigning at churches in the area so fun stuff uh, let's see here Kalo Plotties what's going on where Kalo, where are you located? And Charles, where are you right now too? I have an interesting topic for you gentlemen while you're in the chat. I'm gonna be talking a little about competency and this tipping point and, and some other topics just around, it will be around Pilates, but it is really a life principle that I've been musing on, I want to bring up, and it kind of came out of conversation this morning. So I'll just wait for a few more people to get into the chat. Uh, yeah, Caleb Plies, I was just wondering where you're from, where you're located. And uh, we'll get it going. So let me just type some stuff in here. Italy's in the house, amazing. I'm not, this is gonna sound like such an ignorant question, but do you know Gloria, because Gasperi, I've had her on before. Um, fantastic uh, mover and teacher, so sweet. She's been a guest a few times here. Um, love having Italy in the house. I need to get to Italy at some point. We did that presentation with uh, Global Pilates and some of, I think some of the teachers were in Italy as well. One day. I have to say that if it wasn't for, um, if it wasn't the season of life where I was running for city, uh, Ward 9 for city councilor, um, I would definitely be doing some travel with core conversations and been on the road and doing some teaching and training and just doing some of these conversations, which I love so much, doing them uh, in real life. So that's gonna happen at some point. For sure. Hello, Shannon. What's going on? All right. Lorna, thanks for joining us. Um. So, yeah, so it is the first day of school. For me, that means not very much anymore. I have one kid off of university, other one also in post-secondary, a third one who's in high school, and the fourth one who's in high school in Florida. He started weeks ago. So I'm sitting here just twiddling my thumbs in terms of back to school stuff today. Um, but yeah, supporting all of you students, keep aspiring, keep trying to be your best, uh, write your script this year and um, just kill it. Do your best. Do your best. 
that, um, yeah, what's going on? Sugar mode off. So loving your content, just so you know. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I see some of you guys liked my um, post from this morning. Let's do a little bit of show and tell. This is uh, a few pictures that I posted this morning. I think I even have some video possibly. Nope. So sitting up tall, heads reaching to the ceiling. Initiate the movement with your hips now. So roll your hips back, feet stay in contact with the mat. Come back up, small roll. Come back up, small roll. That was so fun. Come back up. Try and get another inch on that little roll there. Scoop and roll. Tip those tailbones under. This is setting up for your hundreds. If you're rolling like a ball, that initiated that movement. Roll. So sitting up tall. This is setting up for your hundreds. If you're rolling like a ball, that initiated that movement. Roll. So sitting up tall. Here. So sitting up tall. Hey, Brenda. Can you guys hear me now? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Um, I realized my headphones weren't working. I think everything's good now. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we're good. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks for joining us. Brenda Freeman. Okay, so I think we got all of our like technical difficulties out of the way. So that being said, um, had some fun with that. So I got a chance to uh, hang out with them. My OG squad, these guys. This is when we're doing Pilates at uh, one of the big box gyms in this area. And then saying this is at another studio that they follow us around to where they're doing some basic roll downs and some hip mobility and back mobility exercises and what I was starting to see here was that this is all the equipment that I had when we were doing Pilates initially a mat and one reformer in a corner that's it and I was doing my Pilates thing I uh, didn't have the studio didn't have equipment didn't have a lot of bells and whistles. It just had to be pure movement because that's all we had to work with. And from there, continued to grow it. So just staying consistent with that is the main thing. So I just wanted to say that and share that. Some pictures, Misty Lynn, Cawthon, what's going on? Hey, Plies. Hey, Carrie. Misty, we're doing a bit of show and tell here. I don't know if you can catch this whole picture, but it's a picture of my dad doing some uh, ladder barrel stuff. And someone picked up this picture and made an article on um, myths about men doing Pilates. And at this one, they're talking about like, you're too old to do Pilates or you're too, I don't know, whatever it was. Uh, so they posted it and, uh, and it was in an article and his, his picture was featured in it. So I sent it to him, I was like, dad, look, you're featured in an article. And, was, and he, his first response was, do I get paid for that? So um, the answer is no, that's sorry. But, uh, but that was it. So it was kind of cool to see that he 
uh, was in that and uh, loves moving. I need to get him back in the studio. They moved back to Brantford, so they're about an hour away. But, um, yeah, that's them. That's Fitz. That's my dad. These guys are pounding out these workouts. Uh, there's times when it became easy. There's times when it was just sweating everywhere. So I, I love the fact that these guys came to work every time. Every time. And um, Piercy, I put this picture up and uh, Michael Piercy, uh, he uh, commented. Where's the other one? He commented, he's like, yeah, that's so dope. And I was like, this, these pictures are taken, everybody, at five o'clock in the morning. These guys were my five, 5.30 every Tuesday people for like four years, three years. Nobody's in the gym. They could be sleeping, they could be doing something else, but they were showing by 5.30 to get their work in. No questions asked, no interruptions. They were there putting in the work. So I love that. So just I, when you see that, I know Misty's like, nah, I'm not feeling that. Uh, when you see that though, it's just like, that's the thing that inspires me so much. That, you know, you see these, these professional athletes and you, everyone's watching these videos of these guys doing the work. These are the guys that inspire me. These really are the guys that inspire me. We, we talk all the time about you know, aging adults. I call them super seniors because they're doing all these different things. Um, where is the picture here? Here is a picture of them uh, from yesterday. So it's kind of a crammed picture, but... There's Anthony on the left, that is Carol, that is Fitz's wife right there in the middle. Fitz is on the right and he might be blocked behind my picture, me talking. Uh, and my dad right down in the tan front center. So yeah, so that's the thing. I just, I'm just giving a shout out to these guys because this is the true work. These are my athletes. These are the people that I'm doing this for. And we, I always ask all of you, who is your ideal client? Who do you love working for? Who, who, who does your world stop for? And I have to say, it is these guys right here and top right corner, that guy fits, just, it just embodies what I believe we should be aspiring to. In like These guys are in their 70s, every day get up, get something done, and just trying to get better every single day. Um, yes. So that is the one. I just want to send a quick shout out to them. That was good. Here's one last picture just for the road. Um, that's me and my dad right there. And while he's up there for a moment, I'm going to share some thoughts. There's our show and tell for today. My topic for today is, as I put in there, the tipping point. And I got to thinking about this topic, uh, Malcolm Gladwell talks about it in his book, The Tipping Point, and that's not really where I'm going with this today as much as to say a conversation I was having with uh, my friend slash client, another 70 year old guy, randomly enough, who is a psychologist. And we're talking about that moment of feeling competent in what you do. I was working out on Saturday morning. My first client wasn't until nine o'clock. I got here around seven. I got on the reformer here and I, you know, I took out one of my old books, like the intermediate series, the classical series, and I just went through the exercises just banged up every single one from footwork to my coordination to all the different things. I went in the order. I thought about the flow of the exercises. I kind of just did it. And I was, as I was going through the exercises, I was really just feeling good with the movement and, and you know, all the work that I've been doing just felt good in my body. Some challenges and starting to get a sweat on and all that warm, fuzzy stuff felt good. And as I was doing the exercises, I was thinking about one, how movement is medicine. 
in just such a busy stage of life and feeling like I need a break. But even when I need, I feel like I need to stop, I feel inclined to move more. I feel inclined to work harder. I feel inclined to journal more and inclined to the things that keep me going. I don't want to pull away from them. I lean into them a little bit more. So it was a good workout. As I was going through this movement and going through these exercises and specifically going in order and specifically thinking about transitions and specifically thinking about setting up for an exercise and thinking about how you, all these different things that, you know, at one point were important to me, it just in that thought process. And I need to know them to, to study and I need to know them to be able to pass a test. I found life in them. I found just a freedom of movement. And it was funny because there was a time when I hated this stuff. I went from a place of being interested in it and loving it and teaching it. And even when I was teaching those guys, I knew a bit of it, but I was still going through an apprenticeship program. So I was liking the exercises. I was intrigued by the exercises. And then it got really difficult. Then I reached that tipping point where it wasn't fun anymore. I actually failed one of the intermediate test outs because I was trying to unlearn my personal training and my, my past Pilates search. I was trying to learn this new language and it was all clouded in my head. So I didn't do well in it for a moment. So there's this point where everything was, it went from being interesting to being something I wanted to pursue. Then it became really challenging it became difficult and then it came, became, then it got to a place of competence. So now I'm in this place where I can go through these exercises and find life and find movement and find freedom. But as I was celebrating the fact that I had this freedom of movement on Saturday morning, I was also reflecting the fact that I, there was a time when I hated this, when it was hard, when I was thinking this teacher training is dumb. And I was like, I don't care who is, how wonderful these teachers are. I'm wondering how marketable it is. I'm questioning if if I'm gonna make any more money with this in my back pocket or not. I was going through all of those thoughts. I was going through this place where it's just like, it was just so difficult. And that was so easy. And all this joy in this movement, but I had to press through that place of it being so difficult and so challenging and so many sacrifices. I am in Mississauga. I had to drive to North Toronto, uh, uptown Toronto to, to, to do my course. Which is fine, except Toronto traffic is like many other you know, major cities, it's not fun. And that 20 minute drive takes you 40 minutes on the off hours, you know? So by the time you add snow, there was times that I was driving to the studio, got off, turned around and went home because I just gave up. Legit gave up trying to get there because the traffic was so bad. Send them a text, not gonna make it, I'm stuck. I'm only, I'm 50 minutes from home. I can barely get, I couldn't get out of Mississauga some days. It was so hard. So the point I'm making with all this is that that thing which comes with joy and peace and challenge and flow first came with diligence. What can be done with ease must first be done with diligence. I had to keep working through that so it was a moment of being like, okay, this is good. I'm liking this. I'm, I encourage all of you to keep pressing through whatever you're putting your hand to. I see Ali Green here in the chat. I see others who are pushing their knowledge base to another level. People who are challenging themselves and trying to bring something up. They're gathering information to inform their, their practice and the way that they teach people keep pressing into those things. They may be uncomfortable right now, it may be expensive right now, time or financially, keep pressing into it. Like you will appreciate it one day, even if you hate it right now. There's a sense of the, the bar being here, right? So when I was doing uh, like my personal training and some other classes, I thought, okay, I need to get to this bar for my plies to be good. And then when I got to about here, I realized that the bar was like up here. And that can be discouraging, or that can be encouraging. You can look at that and be like, okay, now I know what I don't know. That's exciting, let's chase after that. Or it could be like, man, I'm never gonna get there. 
And then we forget about the fact that we came from here to here. So I'm trying to put all these things in perspective and all this came out of one workout on a Saturday morning. I'd love to hear in the comment section where you guys are at with that. There's a sense that the journey that we're on, I've wanted to quit so many times on this, on this Pilates journey alone. Like taking courses, doing things, people challenging me, whatever the case is, I've wanted to quit many times. And I think that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing because if I never felt like quitting, I really didn't have that big of a vision. I could have had a smaller, comfortable vision that never pushed me to a point where I wanted to give up on it. I see Misty here, for example, in her studios and the challenges that she's gone through. Those are the things that push us towards greatness when we press through every one of those opportunities to quit. And I feel like that's the thing. I mean, I, there's so many opportunities to quit. There's so many opportunities to sit at a place just below our potential. And you can sit just below, like a, hair, like a thread below your potential for the rest of your life. No one's gonna challenge you on that because they'll see that you're doing okay, that you're good enough, that you're fit enough, that you're strong enough or you're making enough money or whatever standard you wanna throw in there. If you're just doing enough, people let you sit at just enough. But when you go over that and then you hit those benchmarks where you wanna quit, that's not a bad thing. That means that your vision is big enough that it's challenging you. It's pushing you out of your comfort zone. And I've said this so many times before, whoever said quitting is not an option lied to you. Quitting is the most readily available option. Quitting and mediocrity are sitting there. They're like right, they're just. All right, we're back. All right. Quitting is the most readily available option. Mediocrity is the most readily available option. And the image in my head is like when you go into a furniture store and the second you walk in the door, there's a salesman who's been sitting around doing nothing all day and he's like, hi, can I help you? And you're like, no, I'm just looking. And then as you walk around the store, they're like two units away from you the whole time and they're following you. And like it becomes this little like game where you're going around the store and they're just hovering. They're there, they're waiting for you to ask a question because they're ready to pounce. They're ready to help you out. Quitting, my friends, is ready to help you out. Mediocrity, my friends, is ready to help you out at any second. So keep pushing through that mediocrity. Immerse yourself in that what you're doing. When I was in university, when I was doing my master's degree, my, my prof said this to me one time. Said to the whole group, not to me personally, said to the group. He said, dive deep on one thing. We're in counseling right now. You wanna focus on addictions? Read every book on addictions for one year. Commit yourself to one year of reading everything on addictions, going to every conference on addictions. Ask your parents to get you books on addictions for Christmas. Get minor certifications in addictions. And then next year, do the same thing with something else. Immerse yourself in that thing. Family case study, casework. Go to every conference on casework. Go do family systems theory certification. Go listen to a workshop, go on whatever. Dive deep on the one thing, immerse yourself in it, become the expert on that one thing, even if it becomes frustrating. If you realize that once you get into it, it's tougher than you thought, press through to the other side. You'll have that competence and freedom of movement when you get there. Interesting, all the things that come out, right? Like it's, we, we bury these treasures within us when we don't chase after that which is in us. So I, I, I feel like there's so many things that we go after here and we have some great conversations and I absolutely love having Misty with me uh, once a week, having these conversations and just bringing up the best in the people that we chat with. But what do you do with that? What happens after we say goodbye? How much of that do you apply to your life? That's the treasure that needs to come out. Because I could sit here and watch every one of these shows and we had so many brilliant guests on here. I could sit there t 
till next week and just have my YouTube on repeat and just run through every single conversation and I'll get mind blowing content. But if I do nothing with it, I'm just as mediocre as I was before I listened to all of it. You gotta apply to this stuff. You gotta let that stuff come out. Immerse yourself in it, challenge yourself with it, gather all the information, take action with it. Like, like that's the only way that we're gonna achieve our vision, the things we wanna do, right? So, yes, that's what happens when I have a moment to myself. That stuff comes out. Misty, do you wanna join me since we don't have a Wednesday together this week? Does anyone else like to jump on? I have a comment here from Ali Green I missed. Ali, if you wanna join me, give me a thumbs up and I'll bring you on the screen. Soma Movement, Ali Green says, Martha Graham, quote, I love, freedom to a dancer means discipline. That is what technique is for liberation. I love this conversation and really need to hear this today. I'm so glad I tuned in. Thank you, my friend. Ali, care to join us? I'm glad that that resonated with you. I mean, like, I feel like that's, if, the, if no one else hears it and then that, that struck a chord with you, I'm so glad because I think that there are so many things that we are capable of doing and we just sit below it. Let me bring on Ali. Hi, my friend. <laughs> Hello. This is this is so perfect. I am sitting on my kitchen floor mm -hmm. um, in my bathrobe trying to finish a paper for school. So I started my master's in social work. Um, yes. Everything's happening at once. I have this like low grade sense of anxiety panic <laughs> <laughs> about getting everything done. And um, it was just really timely because I definitely jumped into this. Um, I mean, I thought about it for a while and I just said, you know what? If you think about how you're going to get all of it done, you'll never do it. Right. So just start, just start, mm -hmm. put one foot in front of the other. Yes. Um, and I'm, yeah. And I'm finding that everything really is dovetailing and helping me it's improving my teaching um, already, just the, the readings, my way of thinking about things. Um, yes. Yeah. Great. There's, um, yeah, that's exactly it, right? Like we, yeah, it's, it's almost overwhelming, but <laughs> the, uh, I keep saying just okay. run the play, right? Like, you know, like just, just be consistent with it. You just run the play. Like what is, required of me today like i mean tomorrow is even overwhelming what's required of me today yes yeah and that's uh that's pretty much how i'm you know approaching my life right now but also um i am so energized mm -hmm. because of what i'm diving into i feel really inspired um yes. I think going into different um, environments, I think sometimes in Pilates, we kind of get stuck in these kind of same, same, uh, same places, same conversation, same. Yes. And then we are like, why don't I feel inspired? And it's one of the reasons why I love core conversations. Every time I get on here, there's someone, you know, that you just invite really different people on. Um, yes. Some people not even from the Pilates community. Some of those people have um, been, for me, even more illuminating Absolutely. and inspiring than, you know, people in the, the Pilates community. Um, yeah, so I think it's, um, I think uh, it's everything you just said was, it was just, it was so poetic. It was beautiful. <laughs> and I just, I really, really, really needed to hear it today. <laughs> mm. There, um, I, the, the piece about quitting and the piece about being mediocre and the piece about vision are the ones that really hit me because I know that there are, with my highs and lows, 
I have the same message, but they sound different. Mm. You know what I mean? So like, there's times when I'm like, um, how can I put this? I, I feel like I want to quit. Or I feel like there's a lot of challenges on me or I'm overwhelmed. And my body language would be like, I'm so overwhelmed. Or my body, body language would be like, okay, I'm overwhelmed, but I can't wait to st- share the story of how I got through this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's a, like, I, I see it the same, but it's like, it's like one side of my hand or the other. It's still my hand, but I'm just looking at it from different perspectives, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I started following a neuroscientist. Um, his name is Dr. Bo Lotto mm-hmm. and he studies, um, uncertainty Love and, that. um, expanding your perception. And so basically mm-hmm. it's what you said. It's like, and he, um, he had a, he has a podcast and one of the podcasts was talking about how courage is far more valuable than confidence that we never, nothing interesting ever comes from the knowing, you know, it's just what you know, but how much interesting um, stuff can come from exploring the unknown. Yes, 100%. Yeah. So well said. I've struggled with trying to capture words around that because like we, yeah, that confidence piece is, is, I don't say dangerous, but like it can keep us very comfortable. Mm -hmm. or thinking that you either have it or you don't um and so to value courage and you know um courage i think we have this idea that it needs to be on the front page like that's courage someone that Mm -hmm. you know um survives in the wilderness being you know lost for a week or runs into a burnt building but the the courage that really adds up is that that day-to-day um questioning your belief systems, um, yes. you know, having those arguments with yourself, mm-hmm. um, pushing through being uncomfortable and, yes. and gaining that inner strength, which then I think also um, I'm more interested in learning from people that can say things like you just said, like that's shocking to me. Like when mm-hmm. you were like, oh yeah, I actually failed one of my tests. I was like, not Martin. <laughs> What? you know and yeah. so um but when people so there's courage in being honest about how hard it is to be a human being sometimes and yes. that we're not perfect so mm-hmm. um i'd much i much rather learn and i much rather enjoy listening to people kind of you know talk about things like that than then a lot of what's on social media, you know, I have the three mm. steps, you know, here's the three yes. steps to get you, you know, where you want to go. And it's like, yeah, but you, that's not, you don't know the person. So that doesn't <laughs> right. work for them. They have to get themselves there. Um, yes. Yeah. So honesty, yeah. courage, it's a big deal. Yes. Um, and correction too. That's the other interesting part. Like I'm sure you're finding this as you do your courses and like you're challenged by these things when you get feedback and it's, it's inviting you to be humble because <laughs> it wasn't what you thought. Yeah. Like, well, how do you spin that? Right. So I'm realizing that now, you know, even with this campaign, I, I kind of stayed off the topic of where I am right now, but there's like the sense of when people call me out on stuff or when people, uh, are opposed to me in some way, I'm like, okay, well, here's an opportunity for correction. This opportunity to be humble and not strike back out of my own pride, but to actually listen and see, well, where's the opportunity to grow here? Mm -hmm. Which is like, it's, it waxes poetic right now, but when you're in the middle of it, it's like, (laughs) kind of sucks, right? Like, but it's, but you get better for it. So I think I keep shifting my gaze back to, okay, I can be better as a result of this. I can learn from this. I can be better at X, Y, and Z because of this. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, I mean, I think that's growing perception and it's, um, it's a lot of this stuff that I talk about in, you know, the, the embodied work, you know, that, that yes. some of this can be practiced in your body and then it can mm-hmm. translate to your mind, you know, the practice of pausing, the practice yes. of building up responsiveness rather than reactivity. Um, mm-hmm. You know, practicing all of this is so helpful before you have to be, you know, put into the fire. And yeah, I mean, yes. you're in a you're in a p- position where, I mean, people I'm sure are just coming at you. 
sometimes. Yep. Yes. <laughs> it's like a freight train. Yeah. And you really have to be able to hold that space so they they genuinely feel heard, but also you want to you actually can hear them mm -hmm. and and know that um what they're saying is real, what you're saying is real. It's like creating enough space for everybody so that you can come to some conclusion yes. rather than just locking horns and then backing away and nothing ever gets done. Yes, exactly. Uh, Paul Thornley has a few comments here. First one, he says, embrace the uncertainty and the whole world of the unknown becomes exposed. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Missy concurred with that. And then the second one is uh, humanity is all about the future of all about failures. Otherwise we never have evolved or progressed. Right. That perspective is, is key, right? And uh, it's so funny, Ali, like this, some of the things that I've, I've dealt with, like where I've, someone asked me a question and I know that they're trying to like corner me. Like they're not looking for an actual answer. And I answered it, tried to be as like even and balanced with my response only to be thrown at, like that was just avoidance. So you're dodging the question and that, you know what I mean? And you know, step away from that context, just to look at what's happening. Never in the Pilates space do you have someone who comes in who hates movement, who is trying to take you down, who is like, you know what I mean? Like you get people who are opposed because they're, they're kind of doubtful or they're hurt or whatever. But this is like, I could do nothing to appease this person. So in that case, higher level principle is like, well, am I, am I living my life to please people or am I living my life to just be authentically myself and accept the fact that someone is not going to like mm -hmm. me or not? They, they come in with the thing, right? So like I'm learning things like that and they're all the same, same life lessons, but just in a different context, on a different level. And, uh, and they all refine us. Like it's, it's great. I'm actually enjoying that part of the journey. I think Misty is about to join us. Yes, she is. Hi, my friend. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, it's muggy out here. Oh, and wow. I'm under attack by bees, of course. Of course, something's attacking. Um, at the same time, Missy, you want to come in? I know, Paul, if you want to join us, Paul has thoroughly, you've been in oh, the chat for a long time and never actually met. So if you want to jump in, I'd love to have you join us as well. Um, yes, yeah, so that was my morning diatribe, uh, Missy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I'm with Ali. I think it's a great chat because, you know, it's so easy, like you said, to just coast. And sometimes that coasting feels really good until it doesn't. And then it feels almost as bad as not trying at all, at least for me. I have to be pushing myself, capital P, small p, it doesn't really matter in this case, but yeah. if I get complacent I get it's trouble for me it's never good for for, for my mind to be bored. Idle. yes uh, idle yes and um you know first of all kudos to you Allie for owning a studio and then having a side hustle on top of that and going back to school like a right. lot of people would say set me on fire I'm over and you <laughs> said eh Hold my beer. I'm going to do a little bit more. So congrats. I'm, I'm really proud of you. Oh, well, thank hey. you. Well, today I might want to set myself on fire. <laughs> Paul's joining us while Ali sets herself on fire. One more, yeah, please. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Paul. Hey. Hi, Paul. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Ali, how are you? I'm nice good. How are you? you? I wasn't sure if I... Internet work. gods, don't do this to us today. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, no, I got cut out right in the middle of my Leon's peak segment too, right? So, oh, oh, it's oh hopefully, you might have to jump out and come back in. Yeah. Are you He's... running there? I'm running from raindrops and bees, and this is just—it's a lot for me today. <laughs> Well, Paul's joining from Dubai, so maybe what? I know I've been part watching of his adventures. Yeah, yeah. Crazy, I did not know that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've been so following. Do you guys know or... Yeah, I've been following him for a while. I reached out to him. He's such a nice guy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he does um, all of this uh, fascial fascial work. Uh, he has a program called Thrive, and talk okay. about you know shaking up the the system and asking people to think a bit differently. Um, he is definitely one of those people, which is why I started, you know, connecting yes. with him. Um, he has a very different voice and then, but he's also, uh, quite funny and down to earth. So good combination. Yeah. When you yeah. have like heady content, the humor really helps yes. make it digestible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. You know, I don't know if he's coming back the, after, but... the other important part of this conversation while we wait for Paul is, you know, I liked what you were saying about exploring different avenues to to gain mastery or become an expert or or whatever and i think that that's so important but i also think it's important to make sure that people remember you still have to you have to give yourself the time to gain competency within yes. those different directions avenues whatever you want to call it um because it is really easy to bite off more than you can chew. Welcome back. Welcome and, back. and you're not helping yourself at all. In fact, that's when you really set yourself on fire. The overwhelm becomes oppressive. Yes. And it's hard to move forward. Yeah. Absolutely. Looks like he's in and out. Bye. <laughs> and you don't take your Pilates friends with you. Ew. I know, right? Yeah, bummer. Huh. That's so bad. Yes, I think that, uh, thanks for Missy for mentioning that. Cause I mean, that's one of the things that we, we want to jump to that subject matter expert piece really quickly without really enjoying the generalist and you know, being exposed to different bodies and learning that sense of competency first. And I know when I've met people here, you know, through core conversations, people who are teaching, you know, 10 classes a week, 20 classes a week on the front lines and absolutely love it. I have no desire to be a manager, studio owner, writer, international speaker, and they're making their difference in their people's world. And that is, that's their calling. And there's, that's fantastic. So I think that we don't necessarily all have to run off and be like, uh, cranial sacral specialist for Pilates, like we can do our thing and just whatever that is, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's a great thing because we need people who want to get the work out there and get people moving and all of that. You don't have to be Pilates Jesus. Mm -hmm. What you do have to be is able to reach your people in your community in the language that they speak and yep. make a difference, you know? Yep. I think that, that's a fabulous thing. And that, that's, it's not less than. It's not less than. It's like Pilates Jesus for your community. You're I, mean, Jesus. I don't want to be Pilates <laughs> Jesus for my community either. I want to be me. Yes. I, I like what I bring to the table and, you know, people in my community do too i hope i hope they're not just like it's a stockholm syndrome type of thing but i mean it could be that too i don't know um, but what i do know mm. is that it it takes all kinds of villagers to make the village work absolutely so important that the village um recognizes and values everyone you know equally because that's not always the case, which is why I think some people, you know, do the bare minimum and without malice, then all of a sudden they're calling themselves the master of something or they're going to run a whole course, you know, not really having that mastery. And then things start to get diluted down. And so I think if we were, you know, um, more vocal that way, you know, and also Absolutely. new teachers instead of new teachers or anyone, any, I mean, this goes for any 
any place. It's like, you know, embracing and supporting someone that's just starting something out or is new rather than, you know, being like, oh, that's the, you know, that's the new person. Yes. Right. Or, yeah, your toes weren't pointed hard enough in your teaser. Exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of judgment. Yeah. And so, right. There's so many ways that better. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I, <laughs> you have to back. <laughs> yes. You know, beginner, oh, yeah. Sorry, go, Ali. <laughs> the, the beginner mind is such a beautiful mind. Like when you've been doing something a long time. Like if I have a like new teacher come into my studio, I love hanging out with them because I'm like, oh my god, I totally forgot about that. Or there's just such a freshness. Um, yeah. that I end up getting to either learn, learn something new or, you know, return to something that I forgot was important or, or I just get really inspired by their passion. Their zeal. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I keep thinking of like a football analogy. Like remember, do you guys watch the movie? Remember the Titans? Remember that old like Denzel Washington football movie? That was a, to long, that was a while ago. Oh my God, Glenn would watch it like every day. It was on. <laughs> I set it on fire. Get it? Oh, uh, Glenn's a good guy. Um, well, that's the thing. Like, I think that it's the pull flies industry needs to watch. Remember the Titans and just recognize that we're all different. We all have a different role to play, and everyone's role is critical to the team winning. And football is different than basketball in that sort where like basketball, everyone has to be able to run, jump, shoot, pass, but then there's specific roles and positions in football that needs a different body type. It needs a different specialty. It needs a different whatever, like all everyone's needed for their specific unique role. And I think that we start, we need to look at it more like everyone has a unique role in this space instead of like a basketball team where everyone has the exact same skill set and some may be better or worse at it, but they have the same skill set, right? So that's just, I just see it like that. I don't know, like that's that's why it makes sense to me when I see people with their different things that they're great at, or even the rookie shows up and then they carry the team in a sense. So not necessarily carrying the team, but they're doing their piece really, really well. And it their zeal carries the team in a way that the person that's been there for a while just sees things in a different way. It makes them excited, it makes them, and everyone's game levels up by the fresh eyes in the room, right? So I think that we could benefit from a little bit more honesty. You think? <laughs> I mean, are we talking it, about in life or in uh no, like a lot of plan. To be honest, everybody was a beginner. Nobody was like coming out of the womb like I've been infused by JP and I'm going to just like do all of this stuff and it's going to be fabulous and like I'm going to be the alpha and the omega. It didn't happen that way. So mm -hmm. for us to be so critical of people who are new to this and really oftentimes just in need of mentorship or mm -hmm. even, you know, a helping hand. And mm -hmm. some beginners don't want that. They want to be True. the alpha and the omega. They are the ones that they took their second level of mat and they have opened a studio They've, they've not even taken an apparatus course yet, but they're teaching it. Okay, mm -hmm. well, there's those people too. But, you know, if we were just a little bit more honest and saying, I have to start from somewhere, they have to start from somewhere as well. Let's, mm -hmm. let's work together to help elevate everyone rather than just back and say, oh, well, you're not included and you're not included and you're not good enough and you don't have on the right pants, we could have a better community. True. And to Ali's point earlier about courage, that's the thing where <laughs> I think if, if someone's flowing from a place of humility and they have one mat course and they're about to decide to open a studio, I commend them for that courage if they have the humility to be able to say, I still have this much to learn. I still have this much to grow. I still have to surround myself with the right people, whatever it is. So like, I'll, I'll applaud the courage to do that crazy thing if you're going to be humble enough to recognize that there's a lot that you still don't know. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say 
also know that you can do a whole hell of a lot of harm in in doing that. You, you can hurt people, and that not if that, you stay within yourself. Well, yeah, but do you stay in yourself? I mean, how long do, is it before you realize that a lot of these people, someone comes in with a hip replacement, you've done math. Are you going to turn them away or are you looking at the cost of your rent and your overhead and all of these other things? I would hope that they would have the humility to say, you know what, this is outside of my scope. I recommend Dolly Dinkle down the road, but. I, I know for a fact that a lot of people don't do that because they're afraid of how it looks in the marketplace. A lot of bad decisions are market driven. Yes. But that's where these conversations come in. We're talking about having an osteo in your hip pocket and a chiro that you know and a physio on your team and an RMT in your circle that I can say, okay, I only teach Matt here but here's the Cairo and he's going to tell me what I need to work on with you when you come back. And if you've only done that too, do you have that level of humility to do that? Do you even know what you don't know? Getting well, back to Allie's point of, of competence and courage. That is to me, a responsibility of the training program mm -hmm. to identify here are um, what is it called? Like here's, you know, entry level competency, yeah. here's mid level, here's real core competency. Um, you know, because honestly, like I had an amazing training, but I was told like, um, at one point, uh, don't, don't, don't work with people that you don't know how to work with. Now I didn't own a studio. I was one of those people who's like, I'm going to get my training. Cause that's me. I'm, you know, I'm like, I'm going to open a studio. And then I got my, you know, I went through my training and I said, I have no business opening a studio yet. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work in lots of different locations, learn from different kinds of teachers. And when I feel like, okay, then I will, because I also know how isolating that can be. Yes. Um, because once you own that studio, it is about like, well, I'm not going to let, you know, the Pilates studio down the street know that I don't know this. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, but I, you know, I was told like, don't, but even as a, as a teacher working for someone else, the humanity is walking in the door. Yes. So, um, so it's not like, you know, oh, I don't know how to work with scoliosis. So I'm not going to work with scoliosis. Right. Um, so it's getting that, that education. And I, and I think that you can have um, people who are, highly specialized in in these areas and if that person is available and now with online stuff it's much more available right. if that right. person is available then yes you know i do that i'm like you know this is you know out of my or or i can work with you but you're gonna get a lot more way more out of this person mm -hmm. right going to someone specialized in this yes but what do you do if there isn't that availability, you know, and you're really doing the best that you can with that person. Um, and you read a lot of books. Yes. And so um, I think it's the importance, you know, again, of a training program stressing that you got a piece of paper <laughs> that yes. says that you are competent. Competent. That's it. You know, competence uh, should not be enough. Right. Yeah. In your and, mind anyway. Yeah. And mm -hmm. this is the beginning. Um, and I think that's the, that's the key to, you know, what this conversation is. It's like getting that, that thing instilled in you that um, you, you should always seek out more and how mediocrity and, and, and complacency are always ready to, you know, sit on the couch with you. <laughs> and it's easier. <laughs> yes. It's easier. Yeah, yes. exactly what you said, right. Mark. No one's going to judge you. They're going to be like in Pilates land. They're going to be like, well, she's certified. What's your problem? Thanks, Carrie. Yeah, True. exactly. True. Uh, in those situations, just to give a practical example for you, you out there just watching, in times when I've been in that situation where I don't know, I know that someone knows way more than me on something, I will go with the client and take the class with them. Mm-hmm. 
observe, be a student, whatever it is, let's, let's go together. Let's go hang out. Let's, let's take a class together with this person. So then, you know, I can steal their moves. No, I can like, I can learn from them. And then I can also, you know, remember what it felt like in my body when they were getting taken through that exercise sort of thing. Right. So it just, it just builds my knowledge and it still keeps that person as, you know, in their expertise, I can stay in mind. You still have that credibility because you were able to confidently refer to somebody else. Like all that good stuff still happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I specifically or purposefully um, hire teachers that know way more than me about other things. So I have someone that's osteoporosis based. I have someone that's back pain. I have, you know, there's, um, we're all, you know, we all did Mariska and Megan's um, neurological mm, course. Um, but I don't, I want people in that. And it's so fabulous because when someone calls, I'm like, well, who do they fit with? You know? So, um, and I love that component because then someone gets to work with the people they're interested in. They get to continue to build their mastery. But mm -hmm. if I have someone, you know, that I have questions about, I can go to one of my teachers and say, what do you know about this? And they can yes. do the same for me. Um, yeah. So I think it's awesome to work, be able to either have that in your own studio or to work in a studio with teachers that have these different specialties, which ties in again to this conversation that um, everybody's valuable. And if you just want to teach, like I'm going to use the words, probably not a great word. So, but like kind of the generic, Mm -hmm. Pilates, like that's awesome too, because there's a whole population of people that really don't have any special needs or conditions and they really want to move and get a good workout. Yes. And I feel like that's been villainized to a certain degree. Right. Um, and, and then you can have other teachers that do want to specialize. That's what they're passionate about. When you keep that passion going, you're going to have longevity. You're going to avoid burnout, which is a massive problem in this industry. I yes. have felt it multiple times. <laughs> um, and it's a terrible feeling because, you know, you really are. Um, when I think as a teacher, for the most part, there are exceptions of people that just want to have power over other people. But I feel like for the most part, when you're going into any kind of helping profession, and I consider fitness movement that way, you're coaching yep. people, um, you're doing it from a place of, of passion within yourself. Mm -hmm. um, it really is an extension of who you are. So the idea that um, we somehow don't, I think it's getting better, but we somehow don't in, in this industry have a handle on, and I think Misty hit the nail on the head of the mentoring and all of that. Um, it's a damn shame that really, really talented, skilled teachers get burnt out. Yes. Ali, that is brilliant. And I think I have like nine seconds before they completely close us off here, as always. I'm just like, I'm looking up, it was like 10.58. Now it's like 11. Wow. Um, so good. I'm going to watch a replay on this just so I can like listen to everything that we just said because that was so rich. And um, yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks for jumping in. That was hey. fun. Thanks. I got to procrastinate my paper. <laughs> I know. We'll talk about procrastination next time. How's that? <laughs> That's a bad joke. All right, guys. Thank you so much as always. Have a great day, everyone. See ya. <laughs>